Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Yesterday we saw how Magnus won a great game with the black piece against Anton Korbov and today he was up with the white pieces against Marco Baldav, a grandmaster from Germany rated around 2500. So it's always very interesting to see how Magnus approaches these types of games, right? He has the white pieces, he has a big rating advantage, 350 points. So let's see what he does. So he plays the move knight f3, knight f6 and d4 g6 and now to move knight b to d2 so i feel like from the very opening magnus wants to have a game where the opening battle is not too important but the move knight bd2 carries some venom if black plays the standard move bishop g7 white plays the move e4 and suddenly we're in some sort of peerage defense or a king's indian defense whatever you will black plays d6 and white generally goes here and uh white can hope for a small advantage Another move black can play after move knight bd2 is to move c5 to put pressure on white center. But here white takes and after the move queen a5 from black, white goes a3, b4 and bishop b2 followed by c4 and e3. And white is a little bit more space. Alright, so just to give you guys some sort of context of how the main lines proceed here. But black played the move d5 to stop the move e4 from Magnus and now Magnus played the move b3. So he wants to put his bishop on b2, where it can later neutralize this bishop on g7. So black goes bishop g7, bishop b2, short castles, e3. And here the very direct c5 from black. Black can also play this a little bit more slowly with the move b6, bishop b7, knight b7, and then c5. Because after c5, Magnus took. And black has to act quickly here. If you play knight b7, now white just goes b4 and you're not getting your pawn back. If a5, just a3, and white's just up a healthy pawn. So black played queen a5, but this cost black quite some moves. So Magnus played a3, takes, and now c4, putting pressure on black center. Black took, now Magnus recaptured with the bishop, developing his last piece, and after knight f6, knight c6, he went short castles. Queen b6 by black, and now b4. To make sure that there's no knight a5 jump, that's annoying. Black played bishop g4. <clears throat> and here, I was expecting Magnus to play a move like rook to c1. Because it is quite likely that black will probably have to give up the bishop for the knight on f3 anyway. But Magnus goes h3, he forces the trade. So black takes, and white rook captures. So we get to this position, where Magnus has a pleasant advantage. He has the two bishops, he also has a little bit more space on the queen side. His pieces are pretty flexible. But here's opponent makes a good move, and this is very instructive. Very often when your opponent has the bishop pair, what you want to do is trade off one of the bishops. Because the real advantage of the bishop pair is that you control both color complexes. But if you trade off one of the bishops, your opponent only controls one color complex. So that's why the move 94 was a good move by black. Magnus trades, and now he goes queen c2, hitting the knight. Knight d6 and bishop e2, dropping the bishop back. Rook a c8 and now queen b2. So basically now his queen took over the role that his bishop had earlier, right? Look at how this queen always puts pressure on this long diagonal. King g8, Magnus activates the rook with rook a c1, rook fd8. And here we get to why this video is called Magnus's Alpha Zero. We saw in a game against Korobov, he played the move h4 or h5. He played it against Hare Krishna and it paid off. He won a nice game as well. And here in this position, what does he do? He goes for the move h4. Now for those of you, you might be wondering, what is Alpha Zero even? So Alpha Zero was a chess AI that basically learned to play chess by itself. And when it played a match against Stockfish in 2017, in many games, it used this pawn push h4, h5, and very often h6, or depending on the situation, sometimes want to take and soften Black's king side. But really this pawn push was what stood out to a lot of people. And Magnus has learned to incorporate it in his own games. And it's difficult for black to deal with. Let's see what black can do. If black goes h5, here white goes knight g5. And now there's no good way to get rid of the knight. If your pawn was still here, you could, you could go h6. And you don't want to play f6. Because then you weaken this square. Also your pawn in g6 gets very soft. So what happens then if you go h6? Right, Making sure this pawn doesn't all the way go up, up there but here white goes h5 g5 and here white has a very unpleasant knight h2 with the knight jumping to g4 and white will have some very unpleasant threats for black all right so black played a5 trying to create some sort of counterplay but now b5 by magnus kicking the knight back knight b8 and here i was a little bit surprised as to why magnus didn't just continue with the very natural h5 
But his move 95 is also a good move. Black traded. Perhaps here it would have been better to go h5. Because now g4 doesn't do too much damage to black. Black can just take. And after knight takes 97. Black seems to be doing quite alright. But in the game black took. Magnus recaptured. And now knight d7. And here Magnus played h5. And again this pawn is so annoying to deal with. You always have to wonder. Like is white going to push it to h6? Is white going to take? Soft and black square inside. Oh sorry. So his opponent just took. Magnus recaptured and knight f6 to get rid of the bishop. But then Magnus drops back. And now black's king will always be weak. There will always be ideas towards the black king. Black goes rook to c8 to try to trade off the rooks. Magnus takes. And from here on out, he plays extremely well. He plays knight c4, hitting the queen and the pawn. So black has to go queen c8 to defend this one. Magnus goes queen and d2, hitting the pawn and provoking the move b6. And now he goes queen d4. Right, so you might be wondering, like, okay, he went for this little zigzag, but the point is that now the knight is pinned to the defense of the pawn on b6, so the knight cannot move. And you don't really want to play knight g7, because then your king doesn't have any defenders around it anymore. So black played king g7, and now Magnus very slowly plays the move a4, fixing the pawns on the queen side. Black played queen d7, and Magnus, of course, is not interested in a queen trade, he goes queen e5. He wants to eventually go queen g3 or queen g5 and start creating threats towards the black king. So black played h6, e4 by Magnus, queen d8, and now he gave a check. Again, the timing is always so, so precise by Magnus. He gives his check because now he's ready to go e5 on the next move. King f8, e5, knight g8 by black, and e6. Magnus rips open black's king side. And look at how white's pieces are placed. It's making sure that the, the queen has no entry squares, because the bishop is covering these squares, and the knight is covering this square. So black took the pawn, and now queen f4 by Magnus, another nice move. You can't play knight f6, because you hang this pawn over here. So his opponent played king g7, and this is perhaps where Magnus made the only inaccuracy of the game. I believe he should have played the move knight e5, threatening queen f7, and black's in trouble. If you go knight f6, here white gives a check. You cannot go to h8, because you lose your queen. And same goes for king h7, you actually get checkmated. So you have to go back to f8. But here again, why goes queen g6, threatens a checkmate. And black's position is just falling apart. After knight d6, white can start taking here. There's also moves like bishop c4, which you cannot take because you get checkmated. And black is just getting brutally checkmated here. So you cannot go into this. Black can play the move knight to d6 but here again white gives a check and black faces a difficult choice if you go to f8 there's going to be queen g6 and with the idea that after queen e8 there's queen h7 and there's nothing you can do about knight g6 and black will have to give up his queen so anyway 95 would have been a little bit more precise but what magnus does is also completely winning he goes queen g4 check the king steps back and now he captures this pawn on e6 and again look at the black pieces they are completely stuck on the back rank and Magnus is going to continue his attack with the knight jumping to e5. So knight f6. And here Magnus plays another very nice move. He goes bishop h5. He's threatening queen f7 checkmate. You do not have queen d5 because you hang this knight over here. So black has to take. But now he takes this pawn over here with a check. You cannot block with the knight because you'll lose your queen. So you have to move the king. But now white takes. And white is one upon the queen on h5 also stops this check over here. And black is just completely lost. Met. His opponent finally brings his knight back into the game, but now came queen e5 check, king f8, and queen d4. Another very nice move by Magnus. He's threatening queen h8 check to win the queen, and black doesn't have a good response to it. So black actually resigned here. Again, a very, very nice win by Magnus. There's nothing his opponent can do. Black can play knight f7 to stop this check, but here white just trades and takes the pawn on b6. Again, Magnus is up two pawns in an endgame. It's completely over. The one move black could try, but I'm sure Magnus had seen the reputation, was the move queen c7. But here white has a very nice win. White takes a knight on d6, and black is lost. Because if you take the knight, white can give a check. Check, and you trade off the queens, leading to a winning king and pawn in game. And if black gives a check over here, white goes up. If you take over here, well, here you're down two pawns, potentially even three. And if you give this check over here, white goes king up. And the problem is, if you take now, white goes queen f4 check and trades the queens. And if you give a 
another check on g6 this is not going to help because white goes king queen g4 and if you take now now there's queen f4 and if you try this check over here there's queen f3 and again if you trade up those queens and you get into a winning king and pawn end game there is just no hope so that is why his opponent resigned after the move queen d4 again a very very nice win for magnus and i just hope you all enjoyed this video and i look forward to seeing you guys in the next one